Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time John 15:18 through 20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. The British government has banned a Christian math teacher for refusing to call a student by their preferred pronoun. A Department of Education Teaching Regulation Conduct Panel has ruled that 33-year-old Joshua Sutcliffe acted unprofessionally, and they've prohibited him indefinitely from teaching. Despite requests for leniency and the testimony of several witnesses vouching for his good character, the panel ordered Sutcliffe be banned from teaching without review for at least two years. The Secretary of State for Education said the government's action is in the public's interest to, quote, maintain confidence in the profession. The decision comes more than five years after a classroom incident where Sutcliffe referred to a biological female transgender student as she. Here's the former Christian math teacher, Josh Sutcliffe, who says he tried to be careful to avoid using any pronouns. I know it's a sensitive issue, and I didn't want it to affect the learning environment. Um, and so I continued with that sort of um, position. Um, this, this student um, started a particular lesson uh, well recently and of course I was thrilled I th and you know to be a good teacher you must encourage your students and so I said absolutely fantastic job girls you've done a really good start there. Accused of misgendering, Sutcliffe has fought this battle to get his job back ever since. He alleges that he was targeted for his Christian beliefs because he ran a popular after-school Bible club attended by more than 100 students. Everything he did and posted to social media came under scrutiny by teachers and students. The school shut the Bible club down. Christian Concern Chief Executive Andrea Williams defended him at his hearing last January. He comes here as a man who manifests his faith, who loves the Lord Jesus, who loves his students, who loves to teach maths. But because he's a vocal Christian and manifests Christian views on sexual ethics, on Christian morality, he has found himself deemed as someone for whom it's questionable whether or not he should ever be in a classroom again. Well, I say that Joshua is exactly the kind of young man that we need in the classroom. Folks, at a time when 45% of the people in Britain say they're either atheists or non-religious, don't you think they need more moral leaders, people of faith like Josh Sutcliffe in their classrooms and positions of leadership in the UK? Embracing Judeo-Christian values would turn things around, not only for people in Britain, but also right here in the USA. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12:26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. 
For if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24.10 as a sign of his coming and the end of the age that there would be a falling away from the truth in the Bible. As a result of many falling away, Jesus prophesied in verse 11 false prophets would come along and deceive many. Many of these false prophets will be in the ministry for financial gain as we read in 2 Peter 2, 1-3. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of the truth will be maligned, and in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. This is exactly what we are seeing in the Christian church today. I was going to dismiss you, and the Lord spoke to me about receiving an offer, and I said, I don't want to do that. He said, I'm not asking what you don't want to do. <laughs> I'm yours to command. I'm going to ask you to help me so Jesus don't have to cry no more. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to ask you to help me. So Jesus won't have to cry no more. I've asked the Lord for every dollar given in my ministry. Give me a soul into the kingdom. I will not sleep nor rest until that comes to pass. 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 5. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdraw yourself. Instead of stressing the importance of wealth, the Bible warns against pursuing it. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 19-21, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. California is a climate battlefield. In half a decade, residents have weathered whiplash from the worst wildfire season on record through a 23-year mega drought to catastrophic flooding after this year's outbreak of rainstorms. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. But less so now. Effective today, State Farm is no longer accepting applications for business or personal property insurance policies, citing California's catastrophe exposure and spiking construction costs. The move doesn't impact current home policy holders or auto insurance. With uh, the five years of intense uh, wildfires and losses that we've had, we pretty much lost all our underwriting profit that we had from the last 20 years. And it's not just California. Across the country, insurance companies are ditching disaster vulnerable states like Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. The Golden State already battling a challenging climate, now facing increasing challenges to insure against disaster. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, Likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word, Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. For punishment, for his land, or for mercy. The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days. As we read in Luke 
2111. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Memorial Day weekend is the unofficial start of summer, and that also means tick season is fully underway. The number of tick disease cases has jumped 25% from 2011 to 2019, according to the most recent CDC data. The most common is Lyme disease, but health experts are also closely watching a rare disease that is spreading in the Northeast. It is becoming a bigger concern, something to watch out for here. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder joins us now. So let's talk about this. Why are we seeing an increase already in these tick-borne diseases? So we've seen this big increase over the last decade, and it's linked to climate change. So as you have warming of the temperatures, uh, shorter win winters, longer spring, summer, fall, when the ticks are active, you're going to see more transmission. You have more parts of the country that are also hospitable to ticks. And then you have other issues like deforestation, um, suburban, exurban um, neighborhoods being built in areas that used to be very heavily wooded, where you have a lot of ticks. And so the exposure is just getting greater. Yeah, this is something we're worried about. We spend a lot of time outdoors. We're always finding them at this point. How concerned are you about this new illness, this rare tick-borne illness that's rising in the Northeast right now? I think you're referring to babesiosis, which is another tick-borne disease. It uh, has many of the same symptoms as Lyme disease, but in severe cases uh, can cause kidney failure, uh, lung failure, very low platelet counts. We have seen this on the rise, you know, as part of all of the tick diseases being on the rise, and it is concerning. Psalm 2, 1 through 12. Why do the nations rage, and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces, and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict, and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples, when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples, all who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem. Israel is seemingly maintaining its pressure in efforts to frustrate terror cells throughout the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley. IDF, ISA, and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted counter-terror activities in the aforementioned districts, during the course of which 11 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended in the past 48 hours alone. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, during one of the operations in the city of Jenin, Palestinian suspects opened massive fire toward the Israeli forces who responded with live fire toward the gunmen. And while no injuries were immediately reported among the Israeli troops, hits were identified among the Palestinian militants. It is important to note that there was an apparent uptick in reported fire by Palestinian gunmen toward Israeli forces over the weekend, which coincides with a clear rise in rhetoric by internationally designated Palestinian terror groups over their declared intention to fight the Jewish state over Jerusalem. Among others, in Gaza City, the Islamist Hamas organization organized a rally in which it proclaimed its unwavering commitment to conquering the Israeli capital. Today's message to all parties, whether the occupation or Arab parties, the cause of Jerusalem must be the first and the central cause we can entrench ourselves behind and fight this enemy and this fascist government. 
which targets the Al-Aqsa Mosque nowadays and in an escalating manner. A short while ago, we have seen the Talmudic prayers and attempts to impose the division in time and place. This is playing with fire. Our people will not allow this policy to pass because our defense of the Al-Aqsa cause is defending the dearest we have and our prime cause. Well, the Islamist Hamas regularly declares its aspiration to annihilate the Jewish state despite lacking any tangible capacity to do so. Last week's statements by the top security brass of Jerusalem's defense establishment, in which they broadly highlighted Israel's unwavering commitment to prevent the malign aspirations of Iran and its regional proxies, has clearly raised the level of concern in Tehran, Beirut and elsewhere. While well, Iran sought to deter Israel by unveiling a new ballistic missile capable of reaching Israeli territory, Hezbollah responded by holding a few military exercises along Israel's border, while well, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah proclaimed in a televised address to his followers that the Israeli leadership in Jerusalem was the one who should fear a great war. First of all, the Israelis are the ones who should fear the big war as a result of all the changes I mentioned. They are the ones who should fear the big war. Second, I want to respond to them with the same logic. I tell the enemy's prime minister, minister of war, army chief and commanders, you have to pay attention and not miscalculate. Not only you tell us not to miscalculate, you too don't miscalculate. I repeat what I said on Al-Quds day. You could miscalculate and make a mistake in Gaza, in the West Bank, in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Syria, or in Iran, which could lead to blowing up the whole region. Your miscalculation could be the reason leading to the big war in the region, and the big war in the region will lead you to the abyss, if not to your demise. It is worth noting that Nasrallah's remarks were made from a bunker in Beirut, as he remains in hiding for fear of Israel's presumed intention of assassinating him. And while defense sources in Israel refer to Nasrallah's threat as an indication of panic, Overnight, Israel allegedly responded to his remarks when missiles appeared over the skies of Damascus, targeting an Iranian weapons shipment, along with Hezbollah infrastructure in Rif Dimashk and al Hame, northeast of Damascus city. According to the regime-run Sana news agency, the alleged Israeli strike was carried out at approximately 11.45 p.m. And while Syria's aerial defense array attempted to intercept the incoming projectiles, the missile struck their intended targets, causing material damage. And while the Damascus regime insisted that the bombardment did not cause any injuries, the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported on five Syrian casualties, as well as extensive damage to Hezbollah and Iranian infrastructure. It is important to further note that while the Damascus regime naturally pointed a blaming finger toward Jerusalem, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny its alleged responsibility. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now to the drone attacks in Moscow overnight. The explosions raining down just three miles from President Putin's country residence. Tom Supi Burge has the very latest from Ukraine. Good morning to you, Tom. Hey, Lindsay. Yeah, we are right near the border with Russia. The Kremlin escalating its missile and drone attacks on Ukraine. And this morning, a dramatic twist. An upmarket district of Moscow under attack from a swarm of explosive drones. Explosions not far from President Putin's country residence. This morning, the Russian capital under attack. 
from a swarm of lethal drones. Explosions just three miles from President Putin's country residence in videos circulating online. Here, one of those explosive drones clearly visible. Russian officials saying most were shot down, but buildings damaged, two people lightly injured. A Ukrainian official suggesting it's now not just Ukraine that can get attacked by drones. And overnight, the Ukrainian capital was hit by explosive Russian drones for the third night running. One person killed when this apartment was hit. We can hear intense artillery fire not far from here. And these guys are waiting for the command to move. Our team meeting this Ukrainian tank platoon readying for a major offensive. Most of the tanks in the Ukrainian military are made up of these T-72 Soviet-era models. The Ukrainians now have an unknown number of British-made and German-made advanced tanks, but those tanks are being hidden from view. Ukrainian preparations for that counter-offensive now in full swing. Guys, Putin's spokesman reacting to that Ukrainian drone attack on Moscow, saying Ukraine was retaliating after Russia destroyed a key Ukrainian command center over the weekend. All eyes now on how the Kremlin will respond. Seoul and the international community is closely monitoring any military movement by Pyongyang as it claims it will launch a spy satellite as early as this week. South Korea, the U.S. and Japan condemn its planned launch, while China avoids a direct comment. North Korea state media KCNA, citing high-ranking military official Lee Pyeongchul, reported Tuesday that the regime is planning to launch a military spy satellite as soon as June. Now, this is the first time that the North has revealed any sort of timeline for the satellite launch. According to the report, Lee, the vice chairman of the Central Military Commission of the ruling Workers' Party, said the military reconnaissance satellite would be launched to track, monitor and determine in real time the military actions of Washington and its allies. He also took time to point at the latest joint live fire exercises by Seoul and Washington, which are set to continue through mid-June. The news of the imminent spy satellite launch drew contrasting responses from world powers. The U.S. State Department denounced North Korea's threats, warning that the regime will be held accountable for its actions. It says an actual launch using long-range ballistic missile technology is a violation of the U.N. Security Council resolutions. South Korea also says a spy satellite launch will be a breach of resolutions and that it is working closely with U.S. intelligence authorities for any acts of provocation from Pyongyang. Japan, which was first to hear the news from North Korea on Monday, stressed that the plan threatens Tokyo's security and warned of corresponding actions like interception if the satellite invades Japanese territory, waters or airspace. North Korea launching a ballistic missile purporting to be a satellite is a serious provocation to our country's security. Meanwhile, North Korea's biggest ally, China, reiterated its previous stance on the importance of carrying out meaningful and balanced conversations. The situation on the Korean Peninsula has come to where it is for a reason. We hope that all parties concerned will face the issue head on, stick to the direction of a political settlement and address their legitimate concerns in a balanced manner through meaningful dialogue. China, however, did not respond to whether the satellite launch is a violation of the UN Security Council resolutions. Luke 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Gunfire and explosions in India's northeastern state of Manipur. This is the latest in weeks of violence between the Kuki tribal group and the ethnic majority Meitei people. India's Home Minister arrived in Manipur on Monday. He's the most senior official from New Delhi to visit since the unrest began. Dozens of people have been killed and at least 35,000 forced from their homes since the unrest began nearly four weeks ago. Tribal groups were angered after Manipur's High Court recommended granting tribal status to the Meitei, who make up half of the state's population. That would allow them to own land in tribal-dominated areas.
Cookie protesters in New Delhi are now calling for more intervention from the central government. We are clueless as to what's going to happen. What about our safety? Because of all this tension, I fell ill as well. I couldn't step out of my home and couldn't go to work for two to three days. We are frustrated and scared thinking about the future. The Indian Army has launched a security operation and sent reinforcements to Manipur. People caught in the unrest here can only hope that will curb the violence. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Tonight, gun violence and bloodshed, a stain on the unofficial start to summer. At least 16 people killed in shootings across the country this Memorial Day weekend, including three at a motorcycle rally in Red River, New Mexico. Five others injured when police say the event turned into a shootout between rival biker gangs. All eight individuals have been identified as outlaw motorcycle gang members. 30-year-old Jacob David Castillo charged with an open count of murder, according to state police. In Massachusetts, chaos Sunday night. Two shootings on Revere Beach, just an hour apart. Boston police attributing the violence to two massive fights that escalated. And all of a sudden, there were three shots and a bunch of guys started running. And then some cop was running, chasing them. And then all hell broke loose after that. Ohio and Wisconsin not spared by the violence. Columbus police say seven were injured after a shooting during a party in the southeast area of the city. Three killed and nine injured in weekend shootings across Milwaukee, according to police. Mass shootings across the country, defined by the Gun Violence Archive as four or more people injured or killed, reaching 257 incidents so far, just 150 days into the year. Telemundo Chicago cameras capturing shots fired between beachgoers at the city's North Avenue Beach on opening day. We looked up and we couldn't even grab all of our stuff before we went and hid behind the lifeguard stand. When it happened in the first minute, it was definitely just like adrenaline, like instinct yeah. run away and it was scary. North Avenue Beach is now closed. I need everybody to exit the sand. Chicago police say at least 37 people were injured across the city and eight killed, including 35-year-old William Hare. Investigators say Hare was found shot in the chest on the sidewalk in the Lakeview neighborhood. The car pulled up. Two people came out. There were two gunshots, one from each person. They did not ask for money. They did not ask for anything. They shot at him for no reason. One bullet struck him in the chest and his best friend tried to save his life, and he died. The holiday meant as a time to reflect on those who served, now forever marked as a time of tragedy for some families. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic, listed after men would be lovers of themselves, illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. Luke 21, 26-28 
men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.